You guys ready to go to the upside down? Good evening. What's going on you guys, this is the Knights of Horror, bringing you a video off my phone because I'm not at my studio as you can see, I'm at my mom's house, uh, still recovering from the injury, uh, only time will tell that I'll get back in the studio pretty soon, but I couldn't pass up this video, I had to make this video, Halloween Horror Nights, uh, as of this recording, just announced um, the Stranger Things maze. Now I'm going to give you my thoughts and read some tweets that John Murray put out this morning following that announcement. So without further ado, let's just get started. Um, first off, I'm going to give you my thoughts. I am I'm really excited for this maze. Um, I, I really love both seasons of Stranger Things. They were really good seasons, and um, I, I cannot be more excited for this. There's a lot of aspects I want to see in this maze that um, are in the show. I want to see uh, how they interpret the upside down in this maze. Uh, we see it in the show. It's a very dark, very kind of like um, vine, black viney place. And, it, you know, it, it's just always like the skies are red. And uh, like I said, it's just a very dark place. Um, that is one thing they're going to have to tackle going into this maze that I hope they uh, get right. Um, another thing that I brought up in the podcast with TLEV, you guys can go check that out too, um, is that in that uh, I'm hoping that the facade is either one of two things. Um, it's either uh, a sign, and then we go into Hawkins, it says welcome to Hawkins and stuff, or I'm hoping it's the school, but it's the upside down version of the school like we've seen in the show, where it's all black with the vines all over and everything, so um, only time will tell with the facade. Um, you will be seeing a lot of construction updates when um, this, uh, when the construction starts at, at Horror Nights. I'm going to go over a lot over the summer um, with uh, George, and we're going to film some construction updates uh, and stuff like that. That being said, uh, some other things I would love to see in the maze, um, of course, obviously, the Demogorgons are going to be in the maze. They're the kind of main villains of the show, and um, I I'm curious to see how they're going to incorporate that. Um, I want to see how the makeup, especially, is going to be on the Demogorgons. Universal Studios is known for uh, bringing really good um, makeup in the past years of, uh, you know, at least of when I was going. I've, I've been going since 2011. Um, and from the past years that I've went, uh, Universal's uh, makeup for their mazes has been phenomenal. From uh, Alien vs. Predator to, uh, you know, Krampus, uh, American Horror Story, all those. They've just been really good with their makeup and stuff. And so I I'm, I'm really curious to see how they incorporate uh, the Demogorgons, uh, the little kids, obviously, Eleven, um, just all of that. I I'm excited to see what they can bring. Um now, I know this was two seasons. I don't know which... I think he's doing both seasons. I don't know if he's doing... I don't know if he's just focusing on one season. Um, I'm, I'm almost certain that it's going to be two seasons. But, uh, Murdy has said in the past that it's hard to do a show with uh, two or more seasons because there's a lot you have to look out for and stuff like that. He said that with American Horror Story the first time he did it, uh, The Maze, uh, that it's just harder to do it... Uh, with like uh, multiple seasons because you have to you have, there's a lot you have to watch there's a lot you have to look out for there's a lot that you have to pick from uh, each season and you only have so much uh, you know space and time for the maze that you have to pretty much summarize two seasons in five minutes so um, I, I'm just excited to see what we're gonna see in this maze um, I'm hoping that we go in the upside down obviously I uh, hope we see a lot of the infamous scenes I hope we go in the arcade there's a there's a scene in season two where uh, uh, they show um, in the arcade, and and then uh, you know the kids walk out, and then you see the giant monster. I'm hoping we see some aspect of that. Um, I, I'm hoping we see, see the government facilities and stuff. So there's a lot I want to see in this maze that um, in, in the series that they show, and I'm hoping they they uh, incorporate in it. So I'm gonna read you a little bit of John Murray's tweets and give you some of my input. Um, yesterday, uh, Universal announced a Univer on Universal Studios Hollywood official Twitter announcement uh, or official Twitter page. They announced, "Get ready! Our first Halloween Horror Nights maze announcement is coming tomorrow at eight eight a.m. Pacific Standard Time." Now, I kind of found it odd that uh, the the Universal Studios um, theme park Twitter 
share that information with us. Usually we get that information from John Murdy himself on the Horror Nights official uh, Twitter page, which you can follow. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below for both the uh, Universal Studios official page and the Horror Nights official page. Um, and then, you know, I just kind of found it uh, a little funny that Universal Studios um, are the ones that broke the news that we were getting the first maze announcement. Usually John Murdy likes to break that news or he likes to surprise us in a way. Or he kind of just teases us like, where's we're a major announcement coming tomorrow? I'll look out for that. Uh, he then goes on to say on the official Horror Nights uh, Twitter page, by the perking of my thumbs, something this way comes. He put that the night before uh, the maze announcement just to get everyone hyped because that's his infamous saying, um, basically telling us that here comes the announcement. It's about to drop. Uh, he always puts that every before every announcement, so expect that a lot uh, this coming maze announcements or uh, scare zone announcements. He then goes on to say, "Good morning, boys and ghouls, and welcome to the maze announcement season, which apparently starts this year. How, uh, which apparently starts in April this year. Uh, how did you like this morning's announcement?" Now it's funny that he brought that up because a lot of the major announcements um, usually had start. They usually start in like May, June. And we kind of got it early this year. I, I want to say he wanted, maybe they announced it because I know he's supposed to be doing a, a panel at Monster Palooza uh, on April, I think, 15th. And I want to say they maybe announced it so he can get into depth about what we can maybe expect into that maze. Um, and maybe he can do something for the panel for that. Uh, he did say he's got some stuff he's going to announce, hopefully, for 2018 at Monster Palooza. So maybe a scare zone or something. So. Um, maybe he's going to be talking a little bit about Stranger Things, of course, a little bit about past uh, HHN um, years, and maybe he'll do an announcement of some sort. I don't know. I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how he's going to work out the announcements this year. He's going to have to stretch them out usually to about um, July, August. Um, so we'll probably get like maybe one or two a month leading up to the event, and then we'll get the ticket sales and dates hopefully pretty soon. Um, he then goes on to say, I'm a huge fan of Stranger Things, and it's truly an honor to bring this uh, property to HHN. It's the best thing I've seen on television in a long, long while. From the first episode, I started pitching it as a maze experience. So you can see that he's been wanting to pitch this maze. He's been wanting this maze at HHN for a long time. And I really think that's cool because that shows that he hasn't been giving up on this. He's been trying since season one to get this as a maze. And finally, he... Um, he finally got the rights and Netflix is on board. They're like, all right, let's do a maze. Um, just so you guys know, this is not just going to be in Hollywood. It's going to be in Hollywood, Orlando, and Singapore. So if you guys are in any of those locations and like are kind of jealous, because my channel usually covers mostly just the Hollywood aspect because I live in the greater Los Angeles area. And um, I just wanted to make that clear that it's coming to all three of those events. So if you live in Orlando, then you guys are getting it over there in Orlando. If you live over there in a Singapore, you guys get in over there in Singapore. So, um, yeah, that really shows that John Murdy has been pitching this idea since season one, and he didn't give up on it, uh, much like how he didn't give up on The Exorcist or The Shining, uh, and I really like that. Um, another thing I want to bring up, too, is Stranger Things was part of the league lineup, uh, so that's one down for the league lineup. Uh, so far, uh, you know, as of this recording... The league lineup is true. Um, they've only announced, as of this recording, they've only announced the Stranger Things, so I can't say much more on the league lineup. Uh, he then goes on to say, as someone who went to high school and junior high in the 80s, I can say that the show perfectly captures the feeling on that time, so much so that I felt I was watching moments from my childhood, and it's incredibly well written, acted, and produced. So he then goes on to give credit to the uh, actors, uh, the writers, and the producers, how they uh, they catch the 80s vibe very spot on. And I do agree with Demerdy. Even though I didn't grow up in the 80s, like I watch it with my dad who did grow up in the 80s. And he always tells me that I had that toy growing up or that was a big thing growing up in the 80s. And um, I just think it's cool that they, they get a lot of the 80s aspects out there. They have a lot of the 80s arcade machines that they go to a lot. Uh, a lot of 80s games, a lot of 80s references to movies and stuff like that. So I really think that... Uh, Stranger Things did an amazing job capturing that 80s feeling of um, of it in just general. Another thing that uh, is going to be good for Stranger Things um, coming to HHN, because I know last year Stranger Things Season 2 came out like around Halloween time, so it's going to be perfect for promotional. Um, as you're waiting in line, you can watch the... Uh, hopefully they'll have a trailer out by the time um, HHN comes around. Maybe by Comic-Con they'll come out with something or something like that. So I just think it's perfect uh, for at least marketing and... Uh, you can experience it. Uh, it. You know, a good slogan for this could be like, uh, 
uh, you know, watch the series and then come live it, come live the nightmare and you know, real life and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to see uh, how the promotional goes for this. Uh, he then goes on to say, as far as details, I prefer to keep that a secret for now. That's how it would have been in the 80s. I mean, I, we had to wait a whole summer just to find out who shot JR on Dallas. Something should be a surprise to be continued. Um, so yeah, he, he then goes on to say that I don't want to give too much details about what the maze is going to be about. I want to, you know, wait a little bit longer till I uh, tell you guys what the maze is going to be about. But uh, be patient. Um, we have, we're going to tell you guys pretty soon. Uh, he then goes on to reference about the JR on Dallas. And uh, that was a huge controversy of who shot him. And they had to wait so long until you found out about that. Um, I just think, though, this maze is going to be really good. Um, as far as tweets go, that's what I got for now. He, Unless he tweeted stuff later on throughout the day, I didn't cover it. Um, maybe other YouTubers are going to wait uh, a day or so to put up a video like this and just wait till all the tweets are out. But as far as I, you know, as, as of this recording, that's all the tweets that came out. Um, of course, he then, uh, before all this, he, he, he tweeted out, uh, a video of the Stranger Things, um, you know, the promotional, uh, you know, a uh, little little teaser trailer. Um, I'll probably play that at the end of the video. I don't know, though, because of copyright purposes. Um, they do play the theme song. Uh, I'll try my best to put it in there. If not, I'll link it down below if you guys have not seen the announcement trailer. It's really cool. Uh, I'll just explain it to you. You know, they show uh, the bike in front of uh, the Universal Studios sign, uh, the main gate. And then they play in the theme song the entire time, and then they flip it over to go to the upside down, and it's in that, uh, they show the Universal front entrance again with the bike on the floor, but it's all uh, upside down uh, out. You got the red skies, the black vines everywhere, and stuff like that, so it's a really cool trailer. I think it was an amazing announcement. I cannot wait for this maze, guys, and I am truly excited. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching this video. Be sure to, uh, you know, check out this channel because um, we're going to have a lot more maze announcements as they come. Uh, we're going to do a lot of construction updates as they come, uh, a lot of collaborations with some YouTubers that I've been uh, talking with uh, in the works, so be sure to tune in, uh, just keep tuning in weekly, I know there was no Mindless War podcast this week, but uh, tune in next week because we're going to have a very special guest, Awkward Arsic from the channel Awkward Arsic, is going to be on the podcast and we're going to talk some horror, we're obviously going to talk about the new maze announcement and stuff like that, so uh, thanks guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.